Oh my gosh, good afternoon, or maybe it's still like good morning, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, because of that time change thing. <laughs> it's good afternoon! Oh my gosh, I love you, and did you know that Jesus loves you more? Church was awesome. The reason why I love, love, love going to church is because I feel like I am surrounded of, around a bunch of people that are just like me. We love the Lord! I mean, when you love the Lord so much and you know that you are surrounded, that you're just lost in a sea of believers. And when those, when the rest of those souls standing there worshiping, praising Almighty God, when they know when they know, like me, we are all sinners saved by grace. We all come together as a unit. We all come together to, to worship. The reason why I, I love my church so much is because the people that go there are awesome. They're amazing. They come from all walks of life. You know, it, 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 my, my, the church I go to, it's like they don't, they don't judge you by, by your past or where you came from or, or how many kids you have or... You know, they, they don't judge. And I've got to be honest and tell you that I have walked into churches, you know, because I was like, you know, I need to find a place of worship where I can go and be around other believers in Jesus Christ. Because if you're like me, you're going to understand that you can't play a football game with one player. Okay? You can't. You can't play tennis with one player. You can't do life by yourself. You can't. So when you know, when you know you've got Jesus, and then you go into God's house, and you meet another sister, that, that's like, you know what? I'm on the same road. I'm, I'm doing life to get back to Jesus. And it's like there's this connection. It's like, oh, my gosh. And see... I just want to be honest here because you guys know me. I don't lie. So, I mean, and just to show you my nose, okay, it's small. If you know the story of Pinocchio, okay? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Get it? Whenever he lied, his nose grew? <laughs> All right, forget it. Okay, so back to seriousness here. When you know you want to grow and the Lord puts you and directs your little footsteps to a church and then you meet somebody in that church and you're like, oh my God, I love you, love you, love you. And then you go home and you pray and you thank God and you're like, you know what, Father, I'm a mess. I'm a mess, I fail, I'm a mess, I fail, I'm 
I'm a mess and I fail. And then God says, you know what? You were a mess. You failed. See, when you take the ED off of failed, it's no more. It becomes past tense. Okay, I failed. But it's a brand new day. You have the power. You can choose right now. November um, 6th. It's November 6th. 2016. I know. Everybody's thinking about Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, who are we going to vote for? You know what? I want to focus on Jesus. I want to focus on his word. I don't care about what's going on in the world. See, all I care about is what the Lord, what God Almighty is saying. And he's saying, repent. He's saying, give your heart back to him. He wants to make you a warrior. He wants to make you a mouthpiece. He has plans for you. See, people aren't listening. They don't, they don't care about God. They don't care about Jesus. All they care about is about how can they make more money? How can they get that brand new house? How can they get that job promotion? How can they get that Christmas bonus? Because, um, yeah, Christmas. What are we? Seven weeks away. And, you know, every year people are like, ho, ho, ho. You know, I say this every year on my channel. You're going to hear me around this time of the year saying, po, po, po. I am so po. I, you know, it's not about ho, ho, ho. And it's not about I, O, I, O, I, O. So off to work I go. I mean, I work, but I don't even make any money. Oh, no! But you know what? I don't care because my treasures are in heaven. They are. This world has nothing for me. The only thing I want to do in this world is touch another life. I I, I want to help somebody. I want a mentor. I want to help somebody. I want to bring somebody out of, of their darkness, out of their, out of their man cave, out of, out of their woman cave, out of the bathroom. Do you know, I used to spend a lot of time in the bathroom. I know it's just another Donna Diggs original video sharing because sharing is caring. It was about 16 years ago. And I spent a lot of time in the bathroom. I was too afraid. I was, I, I, I was, I was too afraid to face reality. I was too afraid to go outside the house. I was too afraid. I mean, I was a single mom and I had my daughter. She used to knock on the door, mom, are you all right? And I'd be like, yeah, just give me 10 more minutes, please. I would be in the bathroom. I didn't want to do life. I didn't 
didn't know how to do life. All I knew was that I was abandoned and, and I was scared. I didn't have any hope. I was strung out on dope. I was too messed up. I didn't I didn't know how to cope without the dope. I didn't know how to cope without a drink. I was so messed up. I didn't have anybody to answer to. You know? I did whatever I wanted. Hey, it's my life. I can do whatever I want. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. And then when I heard that voice saying, you know what? I love you, Donna. I died for you, Donna. You know me. Why don't you get closer to me, Donna? Why? Why do you keep picking up that stuff? And, and when I heard that, it made me want to drink more. It made me want to stay high more. I just couldn't cope. It's like nobody's going to love me. I screwed up. I had a daughter out of wedlock. No man's going to want me. No guy's going to want me. I was so messed up. I, I, I just, you know. And then I found Jesus. Actually, he found me and he wouldn't let me go. He kept calling my name and calling my name and I was like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you. I don't. I don't want to hear you because I got to do this day by myself again. I got to, uh, you know, God, I'm a single mom. I got a, I got an electricity bill. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. You know, I used to get notices that my electricity bill was going to get turned off. <laughs> and I would tell my daughter, well, if we don't pray, we're going to be in the dark. <laughs> and we would hunker down and pray, me and my daughter, my oldest. And I would say, Corrine, you need to pray. Mommy's been praying. You need to pray. And so she would close her little eyes and she would start praying. And I would hold her hands and I would listen. And she would say, Father God, my mommy works two jobs. Father God, she just got done paying rent. Father God, we don't hardly have anything in the fridge. Father God, Mom needs the electricity on because if the electricity is turned off, the fridge is going to get turned off. And the milk that Mom just bought is going to go sour. I was like, Corey, we need to pray! We need to pray! I don't know where the money's going to come from, but we need to pray. I, I don't know how God did it. I, I don't know. Somehow, there was always money. And you know what? I, I don't remember where I got the money or what happened. I, I, I can't even finish these stories because I don't remember. But somehow, I, I, I would get that $40 for my electricity bill. I know to you guys that's like $40 for an electricity bill, and she was praying and crying over that. Do you know, I, I was working at a job for $8 an hour. 
my rent was like $600 a month. So, I mean, you know, when, when you want to talk about Jesus making sure you have everything that you need, I'm a witness. That's why I keep doing these videos, because if you don't know Jesus, you would want to. He supplies all of our needs. I'm not going to sit here and lie and make up stories. I'm not a liar. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know what, life is hunky-dory now, because it's not! <laughs> and I don't mean to like, get all excited, but my life is still every day. My life is still a battle. It's a spiritual warfare now. <laughs> And if you don't know about spiritual warfare, you're probably going through it too, and you don't know about it. The more you get closer to Jesus, the, the, the tougher things get in different areas of your life. It could be through marriage, relationships. It could be through financial burdens. It, it could it could it could stress it could it could be like you know what I don't have the answers and and I, and I don't know where to get the answers and sometimes it's just a matter of saying God please don't forsake me God please I need another miracle sometimes the Lord is gonna send another person into your life and they're gonna grab you by the hand. And they're going to say, Donna, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's what I had happen today in church. And I love this lady. I love this lady because her husband's in heaven. And I love this lady. She held my hand today. And she was like, Donna, don't give up. I love my church family. I love my church family, and I love you guys in YouTube land. Don't give up. Keep fighting, because Jesus loves you, and so do I. And it's not over till it's over. And you know what? Satan is a liar. L-I-A-R. Liar. And his days are numbered. And stop crying and dry your eyes. I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> Have a blessed Sunday. Don't forget to turn your clocks back one hour. And I love you. And I'll see you in a couple of days, God willing. And don't forget to vote. I vote for Jesus because I just don't do the political system stuff, but don't forget to vote. I hope Trump wins. I don't want Hillary in the White House. And so anyways, that's all I wanted to say today. God bless you. And stop crying. Dry your eyes. Jesus loves us. And Jesus knows what's going on in this world. Okay? This world's getting darker. So you need to shine brighter. And so do I. Love you. Bye.